So we've been, we've been talking about Christmas movies all morning. We were playing Elf for you. We played that game like, you know, what the, can you guess the movie by the opening scene? But I have a favorite Christmas movie, and it is actually the best Christmas movie of all time. You ready for it? Anybody think they know what it is? If you were here yesterday, you can't say, what? Home Alone? That's a great one, but no, this one's better. This is the ultimate. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, that's a, that's a good one. Pat, okay, okay. I'm, no, I'm done with you guys. Those are funny, but no. It's a Wonderful Life. Nothing? Nothing? Have you guys never seen it? Hey, how many of you have seen It's a Wonderful Life? Like, oh my goodness. Okay, not that many of you. It's a super old movie. It came out in like the 40s. It's in black and white. And I, it, if you saw it as a kid, you're probably like, this is boring. But it's really not. It's, it's my favorite Christmas movie of all time. It's really just a great movie. And I'm actually going to show you like 13 minutes of the movie today. We'll watch like eight in the beginning and like five at the end, something like that. But I'm just going gonna, gonna to use George Bailey, the main character, to hopefully kind of relate to maybe something that you guys are going through. And then I'm going to uh, open up our Bibles, and then that's going to be it. So why don't you guys watch... Watch this clip. Hello, darling. Hello, Daddy. Hello, Daddy. How do you like it? We've been waiting for you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Did you bring the wreath? Yes, Daddy. Did you bring the Christmas wreath? Mm. What wreath? Was it the Merry Christmas wreath with the window? No, I was left at the office. Is it snowing? Yeah, it just started. Well, where's your coat and hat? I left them at the office. What's the matter? Nothing's the matter. Everything's all right. Come on, Pete. You're a big boy. You can get this star up way up at the top. There it That's is. That's it. All right. Now, fill in that little bare spot right there. Right. Isn't it wonderful about Harry? Well, famous, George. Bet I had 50 calls today about the parade, the banquet. Your mother's so excited. <laughs> Must she keep playing that? Mom said we could stay up till midnight and sing Christmas carols. Can you sing, Daddy? Better hurry and shave. The families will be here soon. Family? I, I don't want the families over here. Come on out in the kitchen with me while I finish dinner. Excuse me! Excuse me! Have a hectic day? Oh, yeah. Another big red letter day for the babies. Daddy, the Browns next door have a new car. You should see it. Well, what's the matter with our car? Isn't it good enough for you? Yes, Daddy. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse you for what? I burped. All right, tell me your excuse. Now go on upstairs and see if little Zuzu wants anything. Zuzu? Well, what's the matter with Zuzu? Oh, she's got a cold. She's in bed. Caught it coming home from school. They gave her a flower for a prize, and she didn't want to crush it, so she didn't button up her coat. What is it, sore throat or what? Just a cold. The doctor says it's not The doctor? Serious. Was the doctor here? Yes, I called him right away. He said it's nothing to worry Is she about. running at temperature? What is that? Just a teensy one. 99.6. She'll be all right. Of course, it's this old house. I, I don't know why we don't all have pneumonia. The drafty old barn or place. Might well be living in a refrigerator. Why do we have to live here in the first place and stay around this measly, crummy old town? George, what's wrong? Wrong everything, Troy. You call this a happy family. Why do we have to have all these kids? Dad, how do you spell frankincense? I don't know. Do I ask your mother? Where are you going? Going out to see Zeus. He told me to write a play for tomorrow. R-A-N. K-I-N. Hi, Daddy. Well, what happened to you? I want a flower. Uh, wait, now, now, where do you think you're going? Want to give my flower a drink. All right, all right. Now, I'll give, the, give Daddy the flower. I'll give it a drink. Now, here. Look, Daddy. Paste it. Yeah, all right. this together. Uh, uh, 
Good as new. Oh, give the flower a drink. Now, will you do something for me? What? Will you try and get some sleep? I'm not sleeping. I want to look at my flower. I know, I know, but you just go to sleep. And then you can dream about it. And it'll be a whole garden. You will. Mrs. Bailey. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Welch. I'm sure she'll be all right. The doctor said that she ought to be out of bed in time to have her Christmas dinner. Is that Zuzu's teacher? Yes. Let me see. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Welch. Well, it's George Bailey. I'm Zuzu's father. Say, what kind of a teacher are you, anyway? What do you mean sending her home like that, half naked? You realize she'll probably end up with pneumonia on account of you? George. Is this the sort of thing we pay taxes for, to have teachers... Have teachers like you, stupid, silly, careless people that send our kids home without any clothes on. You know, maybe my kids aren't the best dressed kids, and maybe they don't have any decent clothes. Oh, that's stupid. Hey, hello, Mrs. Welch. I, I want to apologize. Hello? Hello? She's hung up. I'll hang her up. Hey, you. I'll knock you up. What is that? Hello, who's this? Oh, Mr. Welch. Okay, that's fine, Mr. Welch. Give me a chance to tell you what I really think of your wife. George, Will you George. get out and let me handle this? Hello. Hello. What? Oh, you will, huh? Okay, Mr. Welch. Anytime you think you're man enough, you... Hello. Any... Uh... Dad, how do you spell hallelujah? How should I know? What do you think I am, a dictionary? Tommy, stop that. Stop it. Janie, haven't you learned that silly tune yet? You play it over and over again. Now stop it! Stop it! Sorry, Mary. Janie, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I... You go on and practice. Oh, Pete, I owe you an apology, too. No, I'm sorry. What do you want to know? Nothing, Daddy. What's the matter with everybody? Janie, go on. I told you to practice. Now go on, play. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> George, why must you torture the children? Why don't you? Mary. Bed for two, four, seven, please. Is Daddy in trouble? Yes, Pete. Shall I pray for him? Yes, Jenny, pray very hard. Me too? You too, Tommy. Could you, could you tell he's not in a very good mood? Why did you stop him? The boy I know. Why did I stop it? I'll show you more later. So, it looks like the Grinch. So, that, that's George Bailey. George, uh, you'll see more later, bro. George Bailey. <laughs> Lives in small town America, Bedford Falls. He doesn't love it there. He wants to go somewhere bigger. He has a family. He has a, a beautiful wife and kids, a home. But this isn't the life he thought he would be living. George dreamed when he was your age of traveling the whole entire world. George dreamed of getting a college degree, but he never had time. He has a home, but it's old and drafty. He has a job, but he's always struggling. He's intelligent. But his friends went to better schools, drive better cars, live in bigger houses. This just isn't what he thought his life would look like. Right before the scene we just watched, one of George's, he, George works at a bank, and one of his employees misplaced $8,000. And if George can't figure out a way to, to replace that and repay that money, he'll go to prison because they'll assume that he stole it from the bank. And when he can't think of a way to repay it, he starts to think about suicide. 
Right after this scene, he walks to a bridge. He feels like he's worth more dead than alive. He feels like his life is worthless. He feels that God shortchanged him in some way and hasn't given him enough. He had something that uh, my, my best friend's dad, he's like a second dad to me, Rick Kyle, called Bailey's disease, after his name, George Bailey. Bailey's disease is, is when you're always wanting something bigger and better for your life. And George Bailey may be a fictional character, this may be a fake movie, but Bailey's disease is very real, and a lot of us have it. So what about you? Do you, do you feel shortchanged in any way in your life? Like God didn't give you the family you want? Do you feel like your life isn't playing out the way you wished it would have played out? You can put your hand down, I'm, I'm not taking questions right now. Do you feel like you've been given enough in your life? Like, did you think by the time you were in high school, you'd have more acceptance letters to colleges, you'd look different, you'd finally have love? Like, are you dreaming right now? Are you dreaming of how happy you'll be in the future? Or are you joyful in this moment that you're in? We all can get caught up and looking for things that we feel like we need in order to be happy. And we have these things that we feel like we need in order to be truly blessed by God. And we think once we get it, hey, once I get that gift, I'll be happy. Once I find true love and the perfect guy, that's when I'll be happy. Once I make varsity, then I'll be happy because chicks dig a guy that's on varsity. Once I finish finals, that's when I'm going to be happy. A lot of us have Bailey's disease. We're looking ahead for a bigger, better life. We're wanting more when there's never really enough more. And by seeking the joy of the future, you miss out on the joy of the present, but if you miss out on the joy of the present, you just miss out on joy. And if we continue, like George Bailey, to look for this bigger, better life, we will continue to be unsatisfied, unhappy, and discontent. But I don't want to live there. I don't want you to live there. I want you, I want me, I want to be satisfied in my relationship with God. I want to be content and happy with where I am in life, but how? Like, how do we find joy in the moment we're in? How do we overcome Bailey's disease? So today, if your life, if you can be honest with yourself and your life feels miserable, or if maybe you're just dissatisfied, like you know your life is fine, you, you know it's good and you should be thankful, but if you just feel discontent, like, man, I thought I'd be a little further along, then today you need to join George Bailey and I in resetting the destination of your life's GPS. This is a biblical acronym, GPS, and it's, it's cheesy, but it actually works, and it brings joy to your life. I call it GPS. It's a cure for discontentment. These are three practices for a happier life, three practices for a happier life. You take out your notes. The first one in GPS is gratitude, gratitude. You want to be happier? Practice being grateful for what you have right now. A lot of times I, get, I, I go to God and I'm like, God, what, like, what's next in my life? Where are you trying to lead me to? I feel like, you know, or I go and I'm asking for more like, God, I really want this to happen. Why not just go to God and thank him for what we already have, for the blessings he's already given us? Psalm 23.1 says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. And it may not feel like it, but in your life, you have everything that you need to be content and joyful right now because the Lord is your shepherd. I've told you before about going to Disneyland with Rick Kyle. And this, all, like these, this sermon, these are all ideas from him. Uh, that he, he showed me this movie. But when I went to Disneyland with Rick Kyle, we're waiting in line. And he said, Caleb, Disneyland, you wait in line for two hours to go on a ride that's five minutes long. If you can't learn to enjoy the line at Disneyland, you miss out on what Disneyland's all about. Then he said, Caleb... Life is a lot like that. Life is full of waiting and waiting, and you're waiting in line for the next thing. And he said, if you can't learn to enjoy the waiting, you miss out on what life is all about. Joy is a destination, but it's also a journey. You just spend way more time on the journey. So if you're waiting to be happy, like, man, I'll be happy when I move out, when I finally make money, when I can make my own family, when I can get that car that I really want, when I find that guy, find that girl, find true love, if you're waiting to be happy, you'll never be happy because happiness isn't found at a destination. But I do believe that all of us in this room, if we were to just look around and thank God for the blessings we already have, we'd realize that our lives are pretty good. First habit of a happier life is gratitude. Second is perspective. 
perspective. We might need to change our goal in life, change our perspective. A lot of us live and we're like, I want to be happy. And it's not wrong to want to be happy. But the way we go about it, the way we're taught about taught to go about getting our happiness is by like, hey, do, do whatever you can like to get your happiness. But, but I need you to understand that if you live for your happiness and fight only for your happiness, you actually get trapped in just being miserable and depressed and you feel alone. So what's the correct perspective? Like what's the biblical way of trying to find happiness? Let me show you this. Philippians 2, 3 through 4. It's in your notes. should be on the screen too. It says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves as better than yourselves. Don't look at your own interests. Don't look at what you want. Look at the interests of others. Do nothing out of selfish ambition. The Bible's saying, it, it teaches us that joy comes to us when we live to bring joy to others. You will find joy when you stop searching for it yourself and you try to bring it to others. That's what the Bible teaches us. When we get our eyes off of ourselves and our problems and the things that we feel like we're lacking and we just try to make other people feel more loved, our lives become deeper and richer. God teaches, and I truly believe, that you will find joy when you start living for God and others. Change your perspective. And lastly, number three is selection. Selection. You need to choose to be happy and not miserable. Choose to be happy and not miserable. How do, you, how do you choose to be happy, Caleb? Well, Philippians 4, 4 through 7 says, rejoice in the Lord always. Like even when you're sad, even when your life isn't going the way you want it to, you can still rejoice in the Lord. Yeah, well, how do you rejoice in the Lord? He says, I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all because the Lord is near. And that right there is why we can rejoice no matter what. It, this verse isn't telling you to ignore what you're going through. Pretend like you're not struggling with depression. It's just saying in the midst of that, rejoice because God is near. And count your blessings, man. Look, what else God, look at what else God has given you. Matthew 6, 27 says, can all your worries add a single moment to your life? No. So it says, don't worry about it. I hate when people say that, but that's what the Bible says. Don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. These verses teach us that it's possible to choose an attitude of joy in any situation. Choose to let fear go and live at peace because God is near. Choose to let go of worry because God has you. God has your back and God is near. In the beginning of the movie, George was always waiting to be happy. He would be happy when he finally got the bigger job he wanted, the bigger house, when his family started to look the way he wanted to. When he drove that car he really wanted, he was waiting to be happy. Well, if you know how the movie goes, George ends up going to the bridge that day. He walks to the bridge right after the same he watches, and he's, like, he's thinking about committing suicide. And he says, God, I wish I was never alive. I wish I wasn't even born. Can you just take my life away? Can you make it like I never existed so God gives him his wish. God sends him an angel named Clarence, and this angel takes George around and shows him what the world would look like if he was never in it. And George goes down to Bedford Falls, but it's not Bedford Falls anymore. It changed. It's different. The, the store his dad used to own closed because when his dad died, he had nobody to pass it off to. His little brother, he went to go, tr go and try and find him. His little brother died because when they were little kids, George pulled him out of the ice and saved his life. His mom is lonely. His wife married somebody else. His kids don't exist. And George runs back to the bridge and he goes, God, give it back. Give me my life back, please. And in the end of the movie, we're going to watch the clip where he starts begging for his life back. He gets it all back. But I need you to notice, he doesn't get more back. He doesn't get more money. He doesn't get a different car. He doesn't get a different home or a different family. He gets back exactly what he had before. But I want you to notice his attitude this time. Watch this clip. Parents! Parents! Help me, Clarence! Get me back! Get me back! I don't care what happens to me! Get me back to my wife and kids! Help me, Clarence, please! Please! I want to live again! I want to live again! I want to live again! 
Please, God, let me live again. Hey, George! George! You all right? Hey, what's the matter? Now get out of here, Bert, or I'll hit you again. Get out of here. What the Sam Hill are you yelling for, George? You... George. Bert, do you know me? Know you? <laughs> you kidding? I've been looking all over town trying to find you. I saw your car piled into that tree down there, and I thought maybe you... Hey, your mouth's bleeding. Are you sure you're all right? What you... <laughs> My mouth's bleeding, Bert! My mouth's bleeding! Zuzu's pedals. Zuzu. There they are! Bert! What do you know about that? Merry Christmas! Well, Merry Christmas. Merry! Merry! Yay! Yay! Hello, Bedford Falls! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! There's a deficit. I know, $8,000. George, I've got a little paper. I'll bet it's a warrant for my arrest. Isn't it wonderful? I'm going to jail. Merry Christmas. Reporters, are... where's Mary? Mary, oh, look at this wonderful old drafty house. Mary! 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 Have you seen my wife? Mary! 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 Daddy. 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 Kids! Pete! Oh, oh. Oh, I could eat you up. <laughs> Where's your mother? She went looking for you. With Uncle she... Billy. Daddy! Zuzu! Zuzu, my little ginger snap. How do you feel? Fine. Not a smidge of temperature. Not a smidge of temperature. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hello. George. George, Mary. darling. Where are you? George, darling. Where are you? Oh, oh George. 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 Oh, George. 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 Oh, let me touch you. Let me touch you. Are you real? <laughs> Oh, just, 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 <laughs> George. Well, you have no idea what's happened to me. You have no idea what happened. <laughs> well, well, come on, George. Come on downstairs. Quick, we're right. on their way. All right. Come on. <laughs> come on in here now. <laughs> now you stand right over here by the tree. All right. right there. And don't move. Don't move. What's happening? Wow. Oh, I hear yeah, them coming yeah. down. Yeah. George, it's a miracle. It's, it's a miracle. Oh, what's happening? Oh, Who's gonna come, Daddy? Come, Daddy! Come in, Uncle Billy! Everybody! Come, Mary. In here! George! Get her come! 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 Get her there we are, the line farms on the right. The line farms on the right. Far coming, John. He almost had to lose it all, but George realized that what he already had was pretty amazing. 
why he's so joyful when he gets to go home. And then you see when he goes home that the $8,000, he had helped people so much in his life that they came and paid it back with their own money. They said, George is trouble, in trouble. We got you, man. We love you. He realized how amazing his family was, his, his friends are. He's, he kissed the part of his house that was broken because he was so happy to have it back. Nothing changed, but he realized how amazing his life already was. And I want you to know that maybe your life isn't perfect. Nobody's life is perfect. But God's blessing is in your life if you will just look for it. I want you to see how amazing your life is right now. And I, I want you to change your perspective. So this Christmas season, rather than wanting more for yourself, be, be grateful for what you already have. Instead of asking how you can bring more joy to yourself, say, God, how can I bring more joy to others? How can I help others and serve others and serve you? Instead of grabbing on to worry like it's your best friend and thinking about everything you don't have, practice gratitude. Choose joy by saying, God, look at everything I have. Look at how you've been faithful my whole entire life. And if you adjust your GPS and practice these habits of happiness, I believe you're going to be a little happier this Christmas season. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for giving us life because it's a gift. Life is a gift that we are supposed to enjoy. Uh, God, we love you. And I pray that every student in here doesn't just have to like begrudgingly get through life and endure it. I don't want them to endure life. I want them to enjoy their lives. God, I pray that over every student. Help us all to just take a step closer to you and closer to your joy and love today. It's in your name I pray. Amen.